And this is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, you, O Lord. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels who come out and separate the, will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Please be seated. (coughs) Friends, grace and peace to you from God, the creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So our sermon title today is Hope Scrolling. Hope scrolling. That might sound a little bit strange to you, but we certainly will get there. I hope by now you know that I'm not against or anti any technology. I have some serious concerns about more and more powerful weapons, but I mean, things like social media, for example, I'm not anti or against that. Technology like that is just a tool, but the question we have to start asking is how are we using those tools? Just like a hammer. You can use a hammer to build a house or you can bop somebody on the head with it. It's just a tool. It all depends on how you use it. There are a lot of legitimate questions out there about what social media is doing to our brains and to our politics and to our social lives. But again, it's just a tool. It's one of the reasons we, as the church, will continue to use social media because we have to get some good stuff out there. But it's not all good. Turns out a lot of folks are using this new technology to do something called doom scrolling. Has anybody heard that term before? Please tell me I'm not alone here. Doom scrolling is excessively scrolling through bad news on social media. And any basic online search will tell you that it's kind of dangerous and it's not the best way to go about getting your news and interacting with the issues of the day, but lots and lots and millions of people are doing it, doom scrolling. Any kind of basic search will tell you that it is bad for your mentality, it's bad for your brain, it causes people to be anxious and nervous and overwhelmed and depressed. Suicide rates are skyrocketing, for example, and so this is the way that many of us are engaging with this amazing tool, this communication tool, this new technology. I guess it's not that big of a surprise though. I feel like we've been sort of doom scrolling anytime we've turned on the news in the past, I don't know, 100 years or so. For some reason, you know, one more day clean and sober or um, food pantries or welcoming ministries or people taking care of their neighbors or holding someone's hand in the hospital, that has never really made big headlines, has it? There's one podcaster I listen to who says, the news should just be called, what's wrong? (laughs) Hello, good evening, here's what's wrong. And now for local news, here's the worst stuff that happened the closest to you. (laughs) But it's always kind of been like that. That's how we've engaged with news and with the world. And it's kind of a two-way street. It's sort of what we seek out, but also what sells the most. And so we've always been using technology in that way, but doom scrolling is particularly harmful. I wonder the next time that you are engaging with social media or watching the news, if if we could be like young Solomon. I love this story of young Solomon. What we don't get the sense of in today's snippet, 
from the book of Kings is that Solomon is just a kid and he was never supposed to be king either. He was like third in line. But all of a sudden, because of this tumult in the land, he's thrust upon the throne. And so he speaks with God and asks for a wise and discerning mind so that he might make good decisions between evil and righteousness, so that he can focus on righteousness, the good stuff, the true stuff, and be a good leader for God's people. I like to imagine that when Solomon asked this of the Lord, that God kind of smiled. He asked for wisdom, but there is so much wisdom just in the asking, right? So God says something kind of interesting. I will do as your word commands. God doesn't say that to many people, but he does to Solomon. No one before you will be, have been greater than you. Nobody that comes after you will be as great as you. It will, do as you have, it will be done as you have said. But I have to imagine that God is smiling, saying, I'm not giving you anything you didn't already have. You just need to be awake to the hope and the good and the true that surrounds you. Uh, Just for a quick second, how about that list that Paul lists to the Romans? The things that can separate you from God's love in Christ, not life or death. That'll mess with you if you think about it enough but not kingdoms or rulers or powers or any of this stuff. To me, that was like our first hope scrolling today. Not doom scrolling, focusing on the negative and being overwhelmed and getting fatigued because the problems of the world are just so big, but instead hope scrolling. Just being infused with the hopeful, good love of God and starting there. I'm not saying that the pressures and the problems of the world don't need to be engaged with. We certainly need to. But if we're doing it first by doom scrolling, then we are overwhelmed and we're detaching and it's just not working. But if we begin with the hopeful love of God, there's so much we can do. In fact, there's nothing we can't do together. And then we've got the parables that Jesus speaks today. Jesus gives us five and a half parables today. Go ahead, back through and count them. Five and a half parables. And it's basic stuff, starting with a mustard seed. We've all heard that one before. Later on, Jesus will say, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. But here he says, this little seed goes into the ground and sprouts and grows and birds come and live in it. That's pretty basic. We understand how that works. But the kingdom of God is also like a treasure that's hidden in a field that someone found and buried and bought the land. Ooh, it's kind of mysterious, a hidden treasure. Kind of stealthy, that one is. Uh, There's a lot of power in taking each one of these parables and just taking it out and fleshing it out and preaching about it, but today I'm thinking about them as a group. This is a wide-ranging set of five and a half parables, metaphors that Jesus is using for what he calls the kingdom of God. There are lots of different ways we could speak that, though. The kingdom of God could be thought of as God's dream for the world, or the kingdom that Jesus brought into the world and will bring fully one day, or God's hope for us, or God's will. It's like a mustard seed that sprouts and grows, but it's also like a fine pearl that a merchant sells all he has to get this one pearl. And it's like a net that drags up all these fish. It's a wide-ranging list. But to me, it's like the opposite of doom scrolling. It's hope scrolling. It's a rapid fire succession of ways that we can think of and engage with the kingdom of God in everyday life. So that that's where we can start. Because the problems of this world are very real and God needs partners in this world to overcome the evil with the good and with the true. But if we're paying attention to what Jesus says, the hope and the truth is all around us. We just have to be awake. We have to be motivated by it. We have to seek it out and find it and use it. The hope of God in Christ surrounds us every day. So we can ask for a wise and discerning mind. We can remember the list of Paul to the Romans. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We can remember the parables of today and remember that we are just surrounded and infused by the good love and hope of God. If we're gonna be partners with God in this world, we have to join God in the hope that it can get better and that we can do something about it. Doom scrolling won't get you there. 
Hope scrolling definitely will. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>